Hello, I'm Chris Cappy, your former average infantryman and your current casual YouTube military analyst. Today we're talking about Textron 6.8mm NGSW. It's by far the most unique firearm out of all of the submissions that are currently trying to replace the US Army's old M4. If Textron's claims are true, then it might be the most revolutionary firearm that we've seen in over a century. One of the key distinguishing features of this version of the next generation squad weapon is that it uses case telescoped ammo. So the whole bullet sits inside of this plastic cartridge that's surrounded by propellant. It's basically taking a propellant bath, soaking in all that gunpowder. But is Textron's 6.8mm rifle overly complicated? And will the plastic ammo cook off inside of the gun? Before we start, please consider liking this video and subscribing to help protect us against the YouTube algorithm. In order to find these answers, I've dug through their official patent filings and found some old test results. We'll hear straight from the soldiers who have tested this gun in the field and see what information and insight they have on this very secretive weapon system. You can judge for yourself whether or not you believe this is the right firearm to be the primary grunt's gun. Stick around to the end of the video to find out about a new attachment that they're adding to the NGSW. In 2012, they got a $2 million grant from the military to continue their work on creating plastic ammo. I believe the Army sees this technology as worth throwing a couple of million dollars at every couple of years just to see how it's maturing. And here's something that many people do not know. According to an old Gear Scout article from 2012, the Army already considered this case telescoped ammo technology, and they considered that it's reached level seven of readiness. That's basically military buzzword talk for this prototype weapon has been tested in the field and it works. Specifically, this testing was firing eight of the LSAT prototypes with over 250 rounds over the course of three weeks. Also, what a weird official government technology scale on a thermometer from one to nine. I could just picture them coming up with this at the government. Fellow bureaucrats, thank you for joining me today. We're tasked with coming up with the technology readiness scale. Jeff, you suggested we make it one out of 10. That's ridiculous. Let's make it one out of nine and let's make it on a thermometer because you know, let's also make the numbers refer to each other in a convoluted and confusing way. So this way we know everyone else is as confused as we are. Hua? When you look at LSAT and you look at their modern machine gun that Textron made, that bid looks exactly the same as their NGSW. Just the NGSW version has a nice tan paint job. LSAT stands for Lightweight Small Arms Technology Program. The army has been funding it since 2012. Hidden away on Picatinny Arsenal's small YouTube channel, they actually have a video of the 2012 Army test of Textron's machine gun versus the saw. There's a few short interviews with the soldiers who used the weapon, and I want to play those for you now. My name is Corporal Hammack. Today we uh, ran with the LSAT and with the saw. LSAT's a lot lighter weapon. It's really a joy to have. Sergeant Vega, Bravo 229, I'm here testing the lightweight machine gun against the uh, 249. It's real good, real accurate. First day we shot, real impressed. Zero on the, the rounds itself. First six round bursts were within a size of a quarter. Then I got three on top of one, so I was real impressed with that. As opposed to with the saw, I have yet to get it within the size of a quarter, so it's real impressive. So this is something the Army and Textron have been working on together for over 10 years now. The question remains though, why hasn't it been adopted yet? Are we looking at manufacturing problems, reliability issues, or is it simply a case of the Army needing to dot their I's and cross their T's? So the 75th Ranger Regiment actually tested these out. They did marches and live fires with the M249 saw versus the LSAT. And 15 of the 19 Rangers said that they would rather carry the LSAT into combat. In a since deleted document saved by the Wayback Machine, there's some published results from the Army's test of the M249 saw versus Textron's machine gun. Red indicates the number of soldiers out of 20 who preferred the LSAT, and blue is the soldiers who voted for the old saw. Almost all of them rated the new weapon system far higher than the old one, especially in the categories of accuracy, foot marching, and ease of target engagement. According to the Army, that LSAT machine gun replaced ammo weight and weapon weight by 44%, and it reduced recoil as well. So in 2018, the Army announced the end of the LSAT program, and that's also when they announced the start of the NGSW program. Textron took their LSAT and brought it over the NGSW program, so we already have all this old information on the weapon out there. But with the Textron AAI LSAT, you essentially have a version of the saw that weighs only nine pounds, which is insanely lightweight. 
it's like half the weight of any comparable general purpose machine gun. Your guess is as good as mine as to why they haven't adopted the weapon yet. Why did it stop right there in 2011 after those tests with the 75th Ranger Regiment where those Rangers said they loved the machine gun? It's like the army just ghosted Textron about it after they had a really nice date. When searching through the patent information, I found something unexpected that I think most people wouldn't notice. So AAI is referencing their patent. And if you know anything about Textron, you know they've owned AAI since 2007. These two companies are working together. So I looked a little closer at that reference. The patent is for a thermal sleeve that fits over the case telescope plastic ammo, and it protects it from the heat of the chamber. AAI is creating an extra piece to prevent that number one problem that people are worried about with this weapon. Some people out there are worried that cook-offs could happen with the ammo when the chamber gets too hot after firing a bunch of rounds. They say it's made up of at least one thermal insulating material, and it's integrated into the front end of the cartridge. The literal million dollar question on all of our minds is whether or not Textron's ammo can withstand the heat of sustained automatic fire. I've been doing some research on the melting point of these kind of polymers, and it turns out they're incredibly high. Some are as high as 650 degrees Fahrenheit. Average temperature inside of a chamber is much lower than that. If you're a plastics expert and you write a detailed explanation of polymer ammo and their potential melting point in the comment section, I'll find that comment and I'll pin it to the top of this video. Textron appears to have patented a method for preventing their case telescoped plastic ammo from cooking off, even when reaching high temperatures. Textron might have purchased AAI also for their knowledge of the Army Small Arms Procurement Program. AAI has already had experience with trying to replace the M16 back in the 1980s. AAI's prototype fires three distinct rounds in a high-rate salvo burst. AAI was famously a part of the last failed trial that resulted in the US Army deciding to stick with the M16. What at first glance might appear to be complicated and difficult to maintain could actually be the most easily maintained weapon that we've ever seen. For one, plastic firing guns could fire a lot cleaner and use less propellant. It's possible that only a very easy to reach part of this weapon needs to be cleaned. The animations created based on the patent information show what appears to be a first glance at a complicated firing mechanism, but on closer inspection, there's actually not a lot of moving parts here. And the way they operate is a sliding mechanism that is being, being driven by a very familiar gas blowback system. It's still powered by gas from the expended cartridge. So the last round fired comes down on its little elevator and the fresh round that comes up from the magazine actually pushes the last empty round out the ejection port. This type of system and ammunition actually leaves less room for misfeed. The problems that you experience with brass casings are absent here. The only extra wear and tear that I could see here is possibly that extra spring on the elevator for the ammo. Corey Phillips works for the Army's Armament Research Development and Engineering Center. He said the following quote about Textron's rifle. The case telescoped ammo still provides the same muzzle velocity range and accuracy as the brass cased ammo. We're not sacrificing lethality for weight. The plastic case does the same job. We've avoided the common problem of failure to feed and failure to eject, end quote. I mean, look at how unique the guts of this firearm are. When it fires, the entire bolt goes into the buttstock of the gun. A buffer tube helps mitigate the recoil, but the bolt hitting almost literally the buttstock. What does that mean for recoil? I've seen some footage where it looks like it's on par with the recoil of General Dynamics and Sig Sauer's rifle. And then I've seen some other professionally produced footage where it looks like the recoil is way less, even less than the M4. It's hard to put a finger on it, really. There is one new fascinating development with the NGSW program, which I know you will all be interested in hearing about. The Army is developing an aim controller enhancer alongside the 6-8 program. It came from the Special Operations Abandoned Iron Man suit program, but it's finding new life with the NGSW. Peter Rowland, a spokesman for the Army, said the system attaches as your standard Picatinny rail mount and is a mechanical isolator for soldier support. A user selects a target or a direction, and then the system holds the weapon in the proper orientation. Jared Keller wrote a great article for taskandpurpose.com where he covers this system. This effort seeks to merely correct for the shaking of the weapon that is not controllable by the user. I can prevent the barrel from moving in ways I don't want it to. Basically, you grab the device and there's a mechanical linkage system that keeps the barrel still in certain ways. It doesn't automatically aim, but the whole thing is closer 
to image stabilization in a camera lens as your hand shakes, the system moves to keep the barrel still." End quote. The small arm stabilization system was one of several subsystems that the Pentagon flagged developed enough for further mature testing. I'm your host, Chris Cappy. Follow me on Instagram at CappyArmy. You're watching Task and Purpose, and I'll see you next week.